from Mesopotamia for putting together this program. For every one of us, alhamdulillah, to uh, benefit and come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this long weekend. And you guys can be doing things that take you away from the masjid. You decided to, alhamdulillah, spend your time by coming to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows that you are people that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise you with the Prophet and the companions and the Salihin, Allah ta'ala. As what follows, the topic that was given to me is the dangers of the street life. Is that correct, sir? And uh, Alhamdulillah, I see that the audience today, we have a lot of young brothers that might be influenced by this lifestyle or might see it to be something that is praiseworthy. And it's really sad that we're living at a time where these things are glorified, right? One of the type, the type of music right now, the genre of music that is going up real high, what is it? What type of music is that? It's called a different name, what is it? Not, not hip hop, not rap. There's a specific, the Chicago type of music, you guys know what? What's it called? The drill music. What does drill music mean? Drill music means, literally means it's a form of killing someone. Drilling this person means you are killing them. So this society now that promotes this, that glorifies it, and young brothers and sisters are growing up in this environment where they begin to think that this is cool, this is something to look forward to. So we need to understand that there are two paths and it's very, very clear. And it's up to you and I to make that, to make that choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we showed them and we guided them to the two paths. There's a path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what He loves. And there's paths, different subul that go against it. And there are so many different paths that lead to things that are destructive. And today's topic is considering, and we are going to be speaking about one of those paths, paths which is the path of violence, gang, Right? The street life, this is one of the paths. Some people don't take that path, but they take other paths, such as, you know, atheism, feminism, liberalism, different other paths that distance from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A majority of our youth are beginning to enjoy this lifestyle. So much so, that the shooter, uh, I don't know, I think I'm being a bit too explicit, but you know, back in the days, someone who was known to shoot people and kill them, they were the lowest of people, right? He was looked at as someone that was low, that had no sense of honor, you know, he, but now the tables have turned. The shooter is glamorized right now. They're looked at, you know, how many bodies do you have? Oh, you're the man. You got this many bodies on you? And it's made that this person is put into a pedestal. So what's happening now, the young person that is growing up in such a society that is listening to these things, 
they're beginning to enjoy it and they're beginning to dibble dabble and give it a try. And it starts with the first step is taking narcotics and opioids. I don't think it's uh, is that severe in Ohio, as I was speaking to some of the brothers. Uh, you guys don't have much, I'm assuming, people taking Percocets and it's not as serious as Percocet, right? No. <laughs> Certain states and cities, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them, have it harder than others. Toronto is becoming really serious right now, where we're having a lot of brothers and sisters, you know, taking these drugs nowadays. So it starts with that and then what happens, it doesn't stop there. You begin to now get involved in gangs. And these gangs result in you now having what's called ops. You guys know what ops are? You know what I'm trying to tell you, yeah. So it starts as trying these substances and it starts in high school. A lot of the youth, some of you are probably in middle school, high school, early university. This is the time where they try to catch you. So the Prophet وسلم, he drew a straight line in the middle. And he said, this is the path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he drew lines to the right and to the left. And he said, these are the paths that lead away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the straight path. Do not follow the paths of the shaitan. Because what happens, there's a famous saying, misery loves company. You guys ever heard that saying? Misery loves company. You find a lot of people, yeah? Misery loves company is that a person is involved in this lifestyle and you are exposed to this person on a regular basis. You go to the same school with them, you live in the same building as them, you're seeing them in the streets, you're seeing them outside. So what does he see? He sees you upon the haqq. He sees you going to school, he sees you doing your homework, he sees you going to dukesi. So what do they do? They say, this is not cool. This is not the way. Come on, I'm going to introduce you to something that's going to be nice. It's going to make you feel good. And you start going the wrong path slowly, little by little. And Allah mentions it in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when He was talking about the shaitan, He says, fear the shaitan. Know that he's an enemy to you. Inna shaytana lakum adun. Fattaqiduhu aduwa. The shaytan is an enemy. So take him as an enemy. Why? Inna ma yad'u hizbahu liyakunu min ashab al-sahir. He's calling you. He's only calling you so that you may accompany him in the hellfire. The sole purpose of the shaytan calling people is that so he can get more people, right? He's miserable, he's going through it all, he knows he's going to be punished, he knows he's going to abide in hellfire forever, so he's trying to amass the people. Likewise, there's people that are known as shayateen al ins. They're human beings, but they call to evil. They call away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people start using young brothers and sisters. They entice you to make money. They entice you to a good time. And it all starts like that. But then later on, you see a trickle effect of how it ends up. And I'm from Toronto. In the past 50 to 20 years, We've had over 300 youths, 300 young brothers get killed in that lifestyle. And the number is probably more, right? These are young brothers that were your age. 
And subhanAllah, sometimes those that are, that are killing each other are two people that were best friends, that grew up together, that shared the same Jordan kicks, that split the patty together, that shared drinks. And it resulted in one of them snaking the other and killing them. Why? Because of fame, because of hatred, because of jealousy. And there is no loyalty in this. There is no loyalty in the streets. And I cannot say this, stress this enough. I know stories and cases of guys that were roommates living together. When one went to sleep, the other one blew his head off. Situations of guys, and this is the least, right? Alhamdulillah, this person didn't even die. Went to sleep, he woke up with the whole house empty, all his money gone, left with what he was sleeping with. Two of his roommates. The whole house clean, they took all his money, all his clothes, all his kicks, took a flight out of the city. There's no loyalty. It reached a point where if someone says to another person, I'll give you 5,000, go kill this individual, they would do it. There was this story not too long ago of two guys that went to do a hit to get somebody. And there was money on that person's head. They wanted this person, they said, if you kill this person, you get this much money. So they went from one city, city to another, and they called one of the guys in that city who was a childhood friend of them. He picked them up, they went to that house, and they started to shoot the car of that individual. It was his wife that they caught. His wife died. Right. And that guy, who was just the driver, is you know, in jail because his license plate and everything was involved in this case. There is no loyalty in this. There is no loyalty in the streets, brothers and sisters. So sometimes you might even be an innocent bystander. Sometimes people, they say, you know what, I'm not really involved. I don't do this stuff. But they associate with individuals. And you might be told, take this and drop it off there. How many cases do we know of people that were just given something to go drop it off and that car got stopped and they are serving time in jail for just taking a bag that they were told, don't open it, just take it. Okay. Why? Oh, this is my, this is the homie, this is the OG. He only wants good for me. He's only telling me to drop off something that's good. It's not bad. So it's very important that you keep your distance from certain people. That you don't associate with them. And if you are, it's in the masjid, you're giving da'wah. That leads me to my other point, with regards to your company, who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are those that are close to you, that you call friends? It has to be people that are like you when it comes to their lifestyle. People that are coming to the masjid, they're coming to the halaqa, they're learning the deen, they're abstaining from haram, they're not earning 
through haram means. They're not in the trap house. They're not involved in such a lifestyle. Tell me who you are, I'll tell you who your friends are. Simple as that. So you need to surround yourself with people that will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to also learn to control your pride. This, the lifestyle of the streets is a very prideful street. You have to be very prideful. What do I mean by that? You can be someone that's humble in the streets. You have to be someone that is very egotistic. And if you're not, it makes you, it makes you as someone that's very egotistic. One of my friends met a guy in Hafsi. Alhamdulillah, his brother. He's good now. He's not in the streets anymore. He made his, he made Tawbah. He met one guy in prison who's serving life in prison. So he asked him, you know, when people are in jail, they, they talk to one another and they say, what about you in here, what about you in here? So he said, he told him, this guy that's serving life in prison, he said, I wanted to enter a club. I wanted to enter a club. And the bouncer was protect, preventing me from entering the club. He was not letting me enter. So I said, let me. So he said, I pushed the bouncer to try to get in. And then the bouncer punched me right in the mouth. He said, I got angry. I went to my car, took out my gun, and shot him. The bouncer died. I got caught on camera, clear, and I'm doing life in prison. He said, it was my ego that made me end up in this situation. He said, I wish I took the punch and left. I wish. If I could go back in time, I wish I could just take that punch and just leave that scenario. Even humiliated. Rather than serve life in prison. So you see that one mistake that he did cost him his life. Right? Something as small as a punch in the face. So you have to be able to know how to control your anger. You have to learn how to control your pride. If you're a prideful person, then know that it can result in you throwing away your life. Making bad choices in life starts off, as we mentioned, with the drugs. And it starts off as small as, what is the most common thing that the young kids are doing nowadays? You know, the most common one, the young kids are doing. What is it? Vaping. Vaping. A lot of young brothers and sisters are doing vaping. What happens when a person starts vaping? First of all, vaping is, was introduced so that a person who's an avid smoker can quit smoking, right? People that never did cigarettes are doing vaping, which defeats the whole purpose. But when a person starts vaping, what's gonna happen is that high is not going to be enough. You're gonna want to increase that high. Then you'll start what? Weed. Then after weed, you're gonna start you're going to start doing the pit, pit pills, Percocets, then fentanyl. Then you keep going down, trickle effect. So it starts with that first thing that you do. You need to learn to not do stuff just because the people are doing it. Be like the people of in Surah Al-Kahf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدًا there are people that went against the whole norms of the society. They left. And they left that environment because people in their environment was doing worse than that. They were worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This lifestyle, brothers and sisters, turns a person into a murderer. And we know the seriousness of killing a soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned in the Quran clearly that the one who kills a soul is like the one who killed all of humanity. When you get involved in this lifestyle, especially the way that it's going now, the streets in the 90s is not the same as the streets in 2023. You guys know that, right? Right now, if you don't have a body, you don't have no ratings. Back in the days, it was different. Now it's completely different. So, to be in the street, you have to kill somebody. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran clearly, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمًا That's it. خَالِدًا فِيهَا What else? وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ what else? وَلَعَنَهُ What else? وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا Right? This is for the one who kills someone. And it's a Muslim. And it's متعمد On purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are, they will earn the punishment of Allah. They will earn Jahannam. They will abide in there forever. They will earn the anger of Allah. And they will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has prepared for them a severe punishment. So a person will probably think, you know, young brother is sitting here is like, this guy talking about killing someone. I'm not going to get to that level. I'm not going to get to the level of killing. It starts as small as doing vaping. Mark my words. Start as small as vaping. To the point where if you don't stop it and say, I am done, it'll only take a next step. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Allah mentioned, and the Prophet also mentioned in the hadith, that the Kaaba, you guys know the Kaaba? They say annually, 15 to 20 million people visit there annually. And about 3 to 4 million people visit there during Hajj time. Right? Sometimes it reaches 5 million. That Kaaba, imagine someone was to go and destroy it and break it. How would everyone react? Angry, right? How are you destroying the Kaaba? All those millions of people coming to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're destroying it? Guess what? That Kaaba being destroyed is lesser of a sin in the eyes of Allah than killing the soul of one believer. That's how serious it is. It's better for you to take a flight. Go to Mecca. Bomb the Kaaba with nobody in it, just destroy the, the structure, then to take a soul. Right? That's how serious it is. And this lifestyle encourages that. The streets lifestyle encourages killing of people. This lifestyle, brothers and sisters, is a lifestyle in which there is no happiness. You're always on edge. You're always watching your back. You're never at ease. You're walking on eggshells, as they say. I know and I have friends and people that I grew up with that cannot comfortably leave their house without, till today, putting on a mask like it's COVID. Walking on eggshells can be in certain places. If they are, they're always watching their back. They're on edge. Why? Because of what they did in the past. Or what they're currently involved in. Some of them, alhamdulillah, they made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're doing better. 
But some of them are still in that lifestyle. And even if you leave that lifestyle, do you think people are going to stop? Do you think people are going to say, oh, Abdullah, mashallah, now he comes to the masjid, he prays Jum'ah Salah, he prays five times a day, he's part of the Duxi, the Halaqa. Yeah, he, but he, he robbed me and he, he killed my friend and he did all this to me. No, just leave him. Do you think that's going to happen? No. Your past is going to continue with you. That is why the rights that you transgress against human beings is more greater than that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you. And you can make tawbah to Allah. And you can start a clean slate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy with the servant when he turns back to him. But the son of Adam, no, 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 it's not that easy. They don't forgive that easy. Alhamdulillah, there are times where they could, but there are times where they don't. So when your mom and dad tell you, don't go to this neighborhood at this time, don't be out late at this time, come home before at this time, it's for your own interest. None of us were involved. We were involved. They didn't, they didn't want us. Oh, innocent. It was all oh, sorry. We, we didn't know. We thought it was some other guys. But this is how it is. This is how dangerous the streets are right now. Even people that are not wanting it are getting affected by it. And it affects whole communities. It affects families. How many mothers do we know? That lost, that, that lost loved ones, that lost children. I know one mother that buried three of her sons. Right? Some of them, two of them. Is this life? This is where it leads to brothers. And if you get away with it in this dunya, because there are some people that get involved in that lifestyle, and what do they say? I move militant. You guys ever heard that term? I move militant means I'm not going to get caught. I'm smart, right? Even if you get away in this dunya, are you going to get away in the hereafter? No. There is accountability that is waiting in the hereafter. But in this dunya as well, there'll be consequences. You're not going to have, you're going to live a miserable life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the one who distanced themselves from the remembrance of Allah, what happens? What's that verse? What happens? What did Allah say in these verses? That those that are distanced from my remembrance and Allah, that lifestyle will distance you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the guys that, that we encounter are like zombies. Literally. No sense of deen in their lives. And why? It's because of that black dot. And Prophet is saying, if you commit a sin, you get a black dot in your heart. And if you ask Allah for forgiveness, what happens? That black dot is removed. But when you are continuously involved in the same repetitive sins, when it becomes a way of life, when this becomes who you are, when this becomes your purpose, then what happens? That heart becomes sealed. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kal bal kalla. What's the ayah? Bal rana ala ma Their heart becomes rana. Rana is like tainted, dusted. Like it becomes tainted. Right? Like a metal. You know when a metal becomes tainted? That's what happens to the heart when it's distanced from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that lifestyle only involves you in haram, drug, violence, alcohol, 
woman and it's a life of misery, of miserable, like you can live a miserable life and you're never going to be satisfied. And for you to be satisfied, what will you do? You'll pick up a bottle to forget about your problems until you become an addict. Until they bring your body and they say, so-and-so died of OD, or so-and-so died by the gun, or so-and-so died in prison. One of those three. There's no fourth option in that lifestyle. The fourth option is, so-and-so, alhamdulillah, made tawbah to Allah, and he repented and he came back to the masjid. But you young brothers that are here today, alhamdulillah, by your faces, you look like brothers that are not involved in that. Nor brothers that, you know, are familiar with that lifestyle, I'm hoping. But it, all it takes is that one mistake. All it takes is that one mistake that has a trickle effect, a domino effect that leads you to a place of, I wouldn't say no return, because there's always a return, but a place of despair. And you might even lose hope and say, as some guys that I know, and this is very sad reality, but some of them even say, Ahmed, I know I'm going to hell. This is my destiny. There's no way of me coming back now. Literally, I've had young brothers say that to me because of how deep in the game they're involved in. But is their toe, is toe open for them? Of course. Toba is never the man who killed 99 people, who made it 100. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his Toba. Toba is never closed. But if you have that opportunity now to distance yourself from it, then do it. Don't even dipple dapple with it. Don't even half step. Don't even, you know, say, I want to give it a try. I want to taste it. I want to know what it feels like. Abstain from it as far as you can. Bi'idhnillahi dhari. And inshaAllah ta'ala, I'll conclude here. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nasafiruk wa nashadu ilayk. Jazakallah khair for your patience and for listening very attentively. Barakallah fiqh. I'm sorry that I've uh, taken too long to avoid you. Um, inshallah, we'll open the floor.